Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday. Great to see everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Had a great Ask Me Anything Monday. Thank you for joining me. Here we are Tuesday. Got some great guests coming on today and happy to take any questions. Jakey Bakey, good to see you. Success, good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Nick, glad to see you. Happy Tuesday, Colleen. Thank you, everybody. Let's get some question. Hello, Linnell. Great to see you. We will have you on in about five minutes. Let's get warmed up, get some questions going. We will have uh, some unbelievable people. Our Linnell Lynch is coming here from our uh, uh, president of Beauty Changes. Uh, it's going to be amazing. Amazing day. All right. Where's Team David Meltzer? Taco Tuesday, Jesus. All right. I love tacos. I'm in. All right, here we go. Mind speaking on the power of guarantee. Well, the power of guarantee is one which you can articulate quantitative value to exceed what you're asking for and stand by it. Uh, so the first step into the power of a guarantee is to be able to articulate the quantifiable value to be greater than what you're asking for and be able to guarantee it. If so, then that enables you to ask, can you see any reason why you won't want to move forward? Emotionally and mathematically, uh, there's nothing more to go through, work over, etc. Do you know or can you see any reason you won't want to move forward when you can articulate the quantifiable value of what you're offering to exceed what you're asking for? Uh, power of guarantee, one of the highest statistical success uh, of all, if you can articulate that value to exceed what you're asking for. What makes a great interviewer? Somebody that's more interested than interesting. You know, a lot of uh, interviewers just aren't interested. Uh, they're either going through the motions uh, by saying stuff like, tell me, tell me about your childhood. That's not a great interview. Uh, or they're just more interested in talking uh, and telling you. Uh, so you need to be a processor. You need to ask detailed questions. Be more interested than interesting. Secrets of being a great interviewer. Uh, here we go. Where are the most excited about for season two? I assume of two minute drill season two. I am most excited about an hour long episodic vignetted inspirational, unbelievable, uh, $50,000 of cash and prizes. Uh, if you want to try out for season three, we're already taking in applications for season three. So please, I'm looking forward to an hour long episodic inspirational show uh much better than the pilot season one was a good start but now we got to get there and season two gets us there you'll enjoy it on amazon on bloomberg check it out we're there uh very good whoops i'm hitting the wrong buttons all right keep these questions coming we'll bring on linnell lynch at about 805 here we go are you traveling soon and where to yes i am traveling to syracuse Next week to keynote with uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, the famous Gary V, uh, incredible mind. Best probably marketing mind I know in America is Gary Vaynerchuk. And uh, very excited to launch the live speaking with him. And then I go to uh, the Bahamas. And then I go to Miami for the $100 million mastermind. And then I go to the NFL draft in Cleveland, Ohio. And I will be back in May. So very excited to get back on the road and get some live live events in there. And uh, it'll be great. I'll still be doing some virtual speeches from the road as well. What will the Office Hours show be like? Um, office Hours uh, show is just like a late night show, like a Dave Letterman type of show. But for entrepreneurs, with entrepreneurs and conversations around making money, helping people and having fun. Uh, so it'll be very inspirational and educational, uh, but the same type of format um, as, you know, Real Time with Bill Maher or Dave Letterman, uh, kind of a night show. Would love to connect in Cleveland. Yes, we'll do a meetup. We'll all, uh, all absolutely connect in Cleveland. Love to see everybody in Syracuse, in the Bahamas or in Miami. Those will be the four weeks of travel in a row starting next week. Can you believe it's April this week? Uh, wow, the playbook with Jim Heathier aired today. One of my great original mentees. Now we're just, I'm a fan of his. He's CEO of Hyperice, the incredibly 
fast growing, great company, partnered with all the major sports leagues. If you haven't checked out High Price, check out the playbook, download it. All right, it's time to have my friend Linnell. Here we go. I'm going to have to find where she is again. So I will, I'm looking for you, Linnell, if you want to comment or request joining. That always helps as well. She got on here right away, nice and early. Now I got to backtrack through all these to find out. Oh, there she is. All right, there we go. The great president of Beauty Changes Lives. There she is. Hello. Thank you. Good morning. How are you? Whoa. Good morning. I'm wonderful. you and everyone else. Oh, well, you uh, do so much great work by empowering people and giving scholarships and educating people and mentorship, inspiring people. What gave you the idea uh, or what is the idea behind Beauty Changes Lives? Thank you. The, the mission is really to educate, expose the extraordinary careers in beauty and wellness through the gift of scholarships, mentorships, and we have so many programs. Um, but what was the inspiration? I inherited a chain of beauty colleges 15 years ago. And I had the pleasure of meeting so many amazing icons in this industry. You know, it's a multi-billion dollar industry, beauty. Beauty oh, takes everyone's life. But, you know, so many people still remember that movie Grace and the Pink Ladies and that crazy song from Greece, you know, about high school dropouts. Um, but I have met extraordinary people. Now, my students were the inspiration behind Beauty Changes Lives. 75% of my students had gone to some college. No one gave them the confidence or courage to, to go after their dream and start a beauty or a wellness career. I had so many students, one in particular, a 60-year-old woman who said I had to get a divorce and get the kids out of the house to pursue my passion. So literally, beauty changes lives. We've given away about four and a half million in scholarships to date. Um, we have a variety of incredible programs from mentorship to a new one we're just launching called Worth Up, which is really going to fund and mentor the next generation of beauty entrepreneurs to start a product company, open their salon, and really pursue their passion. It's so interesting because I've worked in the beauty industry uh, for a long time. Uh, very, most people won't realize, but it's very closely tied to the sports industry, obviously the entertainment industry, but it has gone through an evolution as well, as you have mentioned, beauty with wellness. Uh, and there's a mindset about beauty that we've learned about over the last two decades about how we look and how we feel and finding inside of us what we see outside of us and so many technologies as well around beauty, especially in you know anti-aging, skincare, uh, all of these areas have exponentially grown over, especially the last decade uh, in the companies and the opportunities for entrepreneurs are growing exponentially as well. And, you know, I've been with John Paul DiGiorgio and, you know, Mr. Louder, I mean, you know, L'Oreal for years, Red, Redkin, the, the male vanity has grown as well. How do you see the wellness side tying into what people see as traditional, you, know, you inherited a traditional beauty school and now you have this unbelievable platform. How has wellness played a role and synergistically with beauty? That's a beautiful question. I also sit on the international board of the iSpa, International Spa Association, which actually was only founded 30 years ago. If you think about it, 30 years ago, we didn't have spas everywhere. Hotels didn't have spas. Now, if you don't have one, you're irrelevant. So wellness has grown into our lives. Think about massage envy. 10 years ago, there was none. Now there are thousands of them. So people realize that to live in today's society, to really tackle stress, they need to have a wellness ritual. And whether that's a facial, a massage, whatever they can fit into their lives. But wellness has really grown. And you think about, as you mentioned, all of the different beautiful protocols to keep us looking younger, healthier, and feeling well. Um, and the professionals behind that, all of the innovations, whether it's the latest in, in the different machines or the products, whether you're using CBD or you're using seaweed, 
there's so much innovation and that's come from licensed professionals. So I encourage everyone to really check out Beauty Changes Lives. Many of you out there have had that passion. You know, who doesn't love beauty and wellness? Um, but to have the confidence to step forward. I've had engineers and accountants all shift careers realizing that beauty and wellness um, is a wonderful opportunity. Because as you stated, it's one of the most entrepreneurial professions out there. The sky is the limit. A uh, well, couple stories. Jan Arnold. I don't know if you all have heard of CND. You know, nails is a multi-billion dollar industry, right? So Jan's father was a dentist. Came to her and her brother years ago with the invention of a acrylic and said, here is this gift. She, he had a patient that always had brittle nails. He created acrylics. That was 40 years ago. Now, Creative Nails is one of the largest, largest organizations. Another example, Ted Gibson. Don't know if you know this famous gentleman, but he had his own show, What Not to Wear. He's a celebrity hairstylist, born in Texas to an army lieutenant, right? Who said, you're going to college. So he went to college and at night went to cosmetology school. He became a celebrity stylist, has owned salons, product companies. So those are two examples. And through Beauty Lives, we have so many rich stories of people who had a passion and then really drove their business to tremendous success. So and, do it too. <laughs> yeah, and, and with that perspective too, I mean, you've turned the Bellis Academy, which I consider to be kind of the Harvard of, of beauty schools that, you know, it wasn't that, you know, uh, beauty school dropout, you know, which was the brand or the image that we've had. But like you said, you've truly created an entrepreneurial school. Uh, I see that beauty and sports and entertainment are backdrops to serious multi-billion dollars of, of industry. And, you know, there's multiple stories. I uh, represented Jonathan Anton and the one and only another great entrepreneur. Um, and some, you know, I, I would say John Paul DeZorio is one of my favorite entrepreneurs, uh, you know, truly being able to transcend just beauty into all types of other industries. I believe he's in the cell phone industry even right now uh, with what he's been able to do. What are some of the business aspects that you teach at the Bellis Academy that truly separate or distinguish you from a normal image of a beauty school? Thank you. Financial literacy is key because everyone who comes out of beauty school is an entrepreneur. You think about even if you're starting as a stylist or an esthetician, you're building a clientele and you need to have the confidence and courage. So we have branding, marketing, financial literacy. We have a whole host of additional programs that really give our students that leg up. Um, in addition, Bellis was kind of reinvented because the traditional schools across the country teach to get you the state board license. Well, the state board hasn't changed its test in like eons. You know, we were still doing only acrylic nails or, or just, you know, um, permanents. You know, who's had a, their hair permed in like decades, right? And so we've added everything from eyelash extensions to hair extensions. We have a master aesthetic uh, program that teaches them all of the latest machines like hydrofacials, et cetera. So our students are equipped to go out into the professional um, community. But yes, all of that is part of making a strong professional. But mentorship and having an extern program so that they see the future so that they have a mentor, because that I think is key almost in anyone's life when they're just starting out. Yeah, for sure. And I, uh, in my history, most people don't know this story, but I used the beauty industry to prove that I can manifest anything in my life. So I told my wife that someday I'd be a L'Oreal model. And I actually modeled the Gray Away product uh, called Camouflage, the Redken Camouflage product. And I uh, was in a commercial, and so I told my wife, see, I can manifest anything. If you can take a face like this and put it as a model, see, I can do anything and so can anybody else. For you, what's the true inspirational side that you teach? What are the things that you, know, you feel are most suited to inspire people? Because any entrepreneurial school needs one thing, in my opinion, to teach people the desire that they must be what they can be. What are some of the things you've learned or you teach over the years to help on the inspiration side of things? Well, we've used a variety of different programs. Uh, 
that that provide that confidence and courage and i think it does really start with having a solid core value structure and so at bellas we really teach our values and to hold true to that and whenever you're right making decisions put them through that lens so that you know that you are making them with truth with ethics and with your confidence that you are doing the right thing so there's many times when it might be the popular thing to go this way or it, it might feel like the crowd is doing one thing but if you stay true to your values it really makes a difference and that's something that we teach and entrepreneurialism is definitely one of our values absolutely and you are speaking my language Linnell Lynch she is at Bellis Academy uh, the president of Beauty Changes Lives. Check her out. You are just the gem. And I wanted to say thank you for not laughing at me when I told you I was a L'Oreal model. You are too kind and humble. I appreciate you. Come back and visit. You are doing such tremendous things on a mission to empower, like I do, empower over a billion people to be happy through making money, helping people, and having fun. I think that clearly describes what you're doing, and you're so good at it. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, so choose beauty. Have the confidence. And... Join us at beautychangeslives.org and find a scholarship to help you on your way. We have scholarships from 1,000 to 15,000, so you can do it too. Absolutely. You're the best. Thank you, Linnell. Have Thanks. a great day. Thanks, you too. The icon, Linnell Lynch and the Bells Academy, beautychangeslives.org. Uh, check it out. They give scholarships, over 700 recipients of, of scholarships. Uh, so, Check it out. They empower, mentor, and if you want to be an entrepreneur. All right, we have a, another person here ready to see us. Let's check out Tiffany Pham, at Tiff Pham here, founder and CEO of Mogul. Uh, would love to. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. Can you see me? I can see you. It's a little far. There you go. Can uh, you see me okay? Yes. Can you see me? Yes, I can see you, and I'm so glad that I can see you. Um, and, you know, I love what you're doing. I am a little bit shamed by the fact that you need to have, have this be a, a movement even, because I am such a love person, a light person, and a lesson person. And yet some people believe in separation. They believe in projecting their insecurities uh, and not looking at the oneness of, of who we are. And uh, you're the founder and CEO of Mogul on a mission to stop, uh, I think, hate of all races, but especially, obviously, uh, there's, you know, from the inception here, we have this historical Asian uh, discrimination and hate. And I just don't even like to say the word hate. Uh, but what can we do to raise awareness, number one, and then to create similarities? I always say, you know, what we need to do is teach people how we're the same and then appreciate our differences because there are differences between people. Um, you know, I got four kids and they're very different, but I teach them to love how they're the same and then appreciate how they're different. What can we do to teach people uh, that message that you're trying, that movement that you're trying to do to accelerate that? Uh, because we, we definitely have a long way to go and these type of issues just historically don't go away. That's a great question and absolutely right now for those who may not be aware, obviously, as David was saying, there's a lot of discrimination happening right now against the Asian American community, Asian Pacific Islander community, and it's become really disconcerting, increasingly actually becoming violent to the point of assault and murder, mass murder. And so what was before perhaps just small actions of perhaps sometimes and often commonplace racist jokes and, you know, oftentimes paper cut type wounds has now become a really deep scar. And I think we as humans should all remember that no matter where we are, who we come, where we come from, who our families are, who we are as people, who we love, we should not be discriminated against. We should all belong. We should all be included. We should all be loved and accepted. And so that I think at the core level is the number one thing we can all do as humans and start to speak up and hold each other accountable for words, for actions that go against that philosophy amongst each other and on a daily level. I think that is also necessary. But then of course now on a worldwide level on a workplace level, we have to do so much more now because of what's happened for those who have forgotten, for those who are lost and are discriminating against others. And so Mogul at our company, for example, one of the ways in which we're taking action 
is through the ways in which we've always taken action, which is to create more diverse workforces, helping ultimately clients and their respective employees to ultimately overcome their unconscious biases by diversifying their teams further, by helping them to recruit more diverse talent across their workplace, and as a result, create more equality worldwide in this way. And so that's the action we're taking, and each one of us can take similar big actions too to help push along this movement and to create more equality worldwide. Absolutely. And it, within every community, we find that people choose the easier path, right? And the easier path is just to generalize uh, and to create these biases. And then they become unconscious, like you said. And uh, I have learned myself over, especially the last few years, to, you know, understand I don't know what I don't know. Um, and you get stuck into what you listen or learn, you know, uh, e even in something that's been so near to my heart my entire career. Obviously, my business partner is Warren Moon, uh, the first African-American quarterback in the Hall of Fame. And yet I have half the people say, don't say African-American anymore, say black. And then half the people say, don't black. Um, how do we deal with the difficulty of so much content outside of our own community that have differing messaging, uh, differing advice. And if you are, you know, I, I, I sit, you know, besides my religion, you know, which I don't consider to be you know, my ethnicity, it's a culture to me. Um, I sit in the majority, right? I'm a white middle-aged male. <laughs> and yet I'm trying really hard to affect change. And you know, I would love for someone like you to, to help me say, okay, here's the best thing that we can do. You, you know, that you, Mr. White Middle-Aged Man, the problem, come, come I, I want to help. And sometimes, you know, I help and I stub my toe. And I think a lot of, uh, about, I don't want to give percentages, a lot of people sit in the position that I do. We want to help. And sometimes we try to help and do the wrong things and we get discouraged from helping. Yeah, and I hope that never, obviously I understand why you might feel sometimes that discouraged because perhaps there's some in the community that unfortunately, you know, might embarrass or shame whenever a, an action is taken that again, um, might be not the most accurate or the words said are not the most accurate. But when, from my perspective, when the intention is good, when the intention is there, I think that that should be rewarded and ultimately, you know, applauded for that intention. And I've always been the one to kind of think always about why that person is doing it or saying it and, and applauding them for that intention again. Um, so I applaud you for the intention and I commend you for the effort. And ultimately, you know, the ways in which to kind of understand how to continue to contribute to such communities is on, again, daily level to continue to espouse the values and philosophies that you do espouse to your audiences, especially with the platform you have. And I'm sure so many of your audience members too today, or our audience members today, are all coming from influential platforms and similarly can continue to speak up and share those values too of acceptance and belonging. So that collectively, all together, our voices will drown out those hateful ones and and then on a you know wider level, in terms of figuring out further ways in which to help, you mentioned you know all the different sources out there, um, and how you know to understand which one to pursue or follow. And you know what I can say is ultimately you're right. There are a lot of sources out there, and who do you un believe in or understand or wh uh, which ones you follow? You know perhaps one of the strongest ways is to just always um, understand who is you know who is kind of like ultimately. The, the leader of that community or amongst the leaders of that community and, and kind of tr look at to what they're saying. The noise and, and see what, again, are the right resources. And so for the Asian American Pacific Islander community, the Asian community within here worldwide, how to help us at the moment, our community, it is really to, you know, again, speak up, say something, do something when you see something happening in the streets, at the workplace, amongst your daily conversations, stand up for your fellow humans and also contribute to, you know, at this time, of course, there's been a lot of victims of different hate crimes across the nation at this time. And one of the communities and organizations helping them is the AAPI Community Fund, raising funds on behalf of the victims of these crimes or their sons and daughters now. And ultimately, as a result, you know, I think over three million has been raised Four to four million has been raised for that fund. Three million has been raised for the victims, uh, the sons, 
and daughters of the victims of Atlanta Georgia murders. Um, a lot has a lot has been raised at this time, and I can I encourage everybody to continue to contribute to those funds and subsequently also like follow, of course, the AAPI leaders who are just continuing the movement towards the Stop Asian Hate movement. And thanks everybody for just being a part in in general. And Tiff, you know, you bring up a good point because I'm a a spiritual pragmatist. I call myself a ferocious Buddha. Um, and my, you know, motto is make a lot of money to help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. And so I don't want to ignore the fact that your dollars speak. And, you know, I think it's really important for people to understand that money is a currency just like faith. It's an object of energy that you put into the flow to get what you want. And it is a way of speaking up. Uh, it's a way of shifting a consciousness. There's a, a lot of things that we can do with our money. And so I want to encourage everybody uh, to support, you know, the unification of a big portion of our community here in America, but of course, worldwide. You know, I lived in South Korea myself, uh, learned a lot about the different cultures that existed within a community itself. You know, I probably knew very little when I First went to go work with Samsung, even between the differences of South Korea and North Korea, uh, just like when I went to China between Taiwan and Chinese. Uh, you know, there's a, a variety of differences, but in the end, all it did was reaffirm one thing, uh, that we all have these similarities, you know, kindness and gratitude and forgiveness and accountability and inspiration, which truly to me means that a tree has no branches, right? It, it just, it doesn't, every branch looks different. That's, all, that's the only thing that we have to see. But, you know, one branch should not go to war against another branch. And that's why I wanted to have you on because through your books, you are mogul, girl mogul, your TV shows, you know, we, you and I hit the money side on our TV shows. I, just did season two of Two Minutes Joe. We have a all, first of all, I got sick of the women winning every, it's $50,000 of cash prizes every episode. Uh, I can't spoil it for everyone, but I was sick of all the women just winning every episode. So I had to create a, a, a female quotient uh, episode, you know, for all women and put them all together. And I, I swear almost every woman would have won every other episode too. So uh, just an incredible, uh, incredible show that you have there. Uh, Girl Starter. I wanted to point that out for people to check out. Um, where can people go uh, to if, if you know they're just want to learn more from a trusted source? You know, I always hate to tell people to just say learn more, but where's some trusted sources? I know you're at Tiff Fam, but where else can people go to learn more so that they can make the right decisions for themselves? Absolutely. I mean, there are so many different. For example, public leaders you could be following on Instagram itself. For example, loved following right now Olivia Munn, the actress. She's an incredible voice right now for the community. Lisa, Lisa Ling, um, of course, as well as Sandra Oh. So a number of, again, public figures that have built significant platforms over the years have realized now the power of the audience they have and therefore are sharing back to the community right now. Um, Bing Chen is a wonderful leader too. Charles Melton. Uh, Philip Lim, the fashion designer, Prabha Garung, Amanda Nyok Lin um, is also a wonderful public figure right now, again, that is sharing more resources of who to follow and, and what to do in this moment in time in which crucial support and, and help is needed. So please definitely follow them all. Mogo itself as well is, of course, sharing a number of resources at any given moment at on Mogul and um, also myself, of course, at 50 Fam. So please feel free to follow any of us. And I think you'll be you know, getting a number of resources al along these days, each day, um, to help. And, um, and yeah, to thank you, David. I mean, I'm excited. Hey, you know um, what? You got one white middle-aged man here. You can use my platform. I will promote and help in any way that I can. I am of service to you, and I'm so proud to be your friend and also to help in your uh, definite productive journey that we all need, uh, which is unification and uh Thank you so much for helping me and helping others unify. Uh, please, everybody, appreciate how we're all the same and appreciate our differences. It's that simple in my mind. And the best way is to become educated uh, And any of these people. Come back, look at it, join us. Thanks so much, Tiff. Come back and join me. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you again for having me. Take care. Great causes today. Look at that. We're changing the world. Check out at Tiff T fam 
uh, PHAM. In case you don't know, it's right, right there posted. Thank you, Tip, for all that you're doing. Amazing, amazing stuff. All right. We got another rocking and rolling coming up here. And let me just find our another guest. Let me take a quick question, and Ian can join me. Uh, let me just see here. Who is the best coach you have ever had and why? Uh, best coach, I always say the best coach is, uh, and I'm doing training on uh, coaching and mentoring on Friday, how to find a coach mentor, be a coach mentor, be mentored and coach. Coach is someone that brings the best out of you. Right, Laura? Uh, and for, my best coach was my defensive coordinator at Occidental College where I played college football because he's the person that brought the most out of me. And I like him, uh, but I love him now uh, because he brought the most out of me and uh, we're all over it. All right, next up, here we go. Back on track, Ian Slade is here, CEO of HBMA Global. There he is, talking about his new health care project management association. How are you, Ian? Hey, David, how are you? Good, man. It's good to see you in person. We get to work on the phone a lot of times together, and right. it's always nice to see your energy, your glow, uh, and you're working on such great things. We This must be cause day, because uh, we're uh, just hitting it one at a time, different causes. Give me a little bit of background about HPMA. Sure, sure. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. It's great to see all the positive energy here, listening to your speaker before me, and wow, it's, it's amazing. So thank you for the opportunity. So HPMA, uh, it's Healthcare Project Management Association. And the goal of this movement, if you will, is to improve healthcare worldwide. So just a little bit of background um, about myself. I, I started out in healthcare actually as a trauma nurse about 20 years ago. And uh, I, you know, I, I did what I could to help at the bedside, but I quickly realized that you can only do so much as an individual. So I learned uh, the different languages in healthcare, everything from technology to finance, and now my focus is on project management or the art of execution, right? How do we get things done? So if we look at what happened last year, uh, we, we now know that we're all in this together and the pandemic had made that ultimately clear if that was unclear at one point to some folks. So, uh, when you look at how we responded uh, to uh, both the, the, the pandemic and also uh, now the rollout of the vaccination, it's really one big project, right? And unfortunately, uh, we, we weren't too good at A, responding quickly to the problem that was in front of us, and B, uh, rolling out the solution. So that is exactly what um, we're trying to do is to empower people, give them the tools and help them you know, create better projects in, in healthcare. And also, um, how can you use this uh, in your own personal life? Because a lot of what we talk about is how to communicate better, how to execute better, how to talk to stakeholders better. Uh, so all of these things are not really you know, specific to healthcare. Yeah, and there's been some you know, effects of COVID that you know, through better project management, and protection, you know, that are pretty significant, you know, uh, over a dozen hospitals fire bankruptcy, right? That could have been avoided through better product man project management. Uh, one that hits home, 1300 healthcare workers died, and we don't even know how many of those healthcare workers infected other people that died, uh, which, which is another problem uh, with project management. 130 hospitals closed in the last decade alone uh, in 15 hospitals closed in 2020. But one of the interesting things that I've learned is the death rate increases six to 8% every time a raw hospital closes. Right. Uh, and so how does the HPMA assist in keeping hospitals open, protecting people from dying? Obviously I know how it would be in administering the vaccine, which we desperately need as well. Right. But even more importantly, how does it affect, because these are issues that seem to be, you know, beyond COVID, something over the last decade uh, that we could avoid as well. Right, right, and, and that's uh, something that I've been really passionate about. You know, first and foremost, as a nurse, my goal is to make sure that we have, you know, healthy communities, healthy patients, and um, moving into project management and working pretty much uh, in every state uh, in the country, zigzagging and helping, especially rural hospitals, 
I've learned that there are some commonalities and um, issues that plague most hospitals. And, and it really starts with uh, the awareness of, of how to roll out project management, the different methodologies, the different tools, different templates. And here's the thing. You don't need to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars to, to have this and execute your projects well. And um, just by helping people, and I've been doing this on a personal level, you know, building project management organizations in hospitals one by one. But as you know, I can only get so far. Uh, so I'm trying to get uh, more people empowered, aware uh, with the tools, and it's all for free, uh, the templates, uh, everything that we use to execute better, and obviously, you know, when hospitals are doing well, the community does well uh, too. Absolutely. Now, where can people reach out uh, to try out the platform, to talk to you, to get the information necessary, so that we can not only keep the hospitals open, but keep people safe and healthy, both people who work there and people who visit there and need assistance. Where can people reach you and find more? out about the HPMA program? Sure. So uh, the site is hpmaglobal.org, right? hpmaglobal.org. Uh, completely free to join. Uh, check us out. And uh, you don't need to be part of the healthcare community right now. If you just want to see what you can do, just, just sign up. Tons of different groups. And for me, uh, Ian Slade at LinkedIn primarily. Uh, but now uh, Instagram. Thanks to you, David. <laughs> you got it, my friend. Well, we enjoy having you on Instagram. You come back and visit. Make sure you check out hbmaglobal.com. The great Ian Slade, incredible work you're doing. You know, so many Thanks. things that I love about this is you never think how much and how many people you can impact as you all sit within whatever specialty you have. You know, here we have an incredible nurse that took it upon himself in order to effectuate empowering others to empower others. And now there's an entire movement platform, just like the other guests. So, you know, I just want to give you an extra kudos uh, for taking the initiative and, and making such a great impact. Thank you. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Yeah. Take care, brother. I'll talk to you soon. Will do. All right. Ian Slade there, hbmaglobal.org. Check it out. What an incredible, impactful day all the way from changing lives with beauty changing lives with uh, a great equality and equity and of course hpmaglobal.org and saving lives thank you so much uh let's take one quick question before we get going here i always like to answer the questions if you want my free book reach out the information's here david at dmelter.com david at dmelter.com if you want my free book i'll sign it ship it to you i want an ebook that's fine audiobook that's fine david at dmelter.com, 949-298-2905. Get my book for free. I'll pay for shipping. Don't worry. How do you decide whether an investment is worthwhile? Uh, it's funny because uh, I was just going to talk about that today with Adweek. Um, number one, you need to know your time and your risk tolerance. And if you know that, uh, you then can align it with your values. And then you can look at the credibility, the emotional attachment, Kathy wants a signed book. Please reach out to me. I will personally sign it to the incredible PR person, my beloved Kathy Cardenas, who is amazing. If you're looking for PR, that's my first choice. She is bravo, hands down. I adore you. Uh, anyway, so uh, credibility, emotional attachment, quantifying the reasons, impacts, and capability uh, to understand that investment to be much greater on than what you're paying for. Uh, but most people forget the first step. They don't know their timing and risk tolerance. They don't know the market, the market makers, and the buy and sell side of what they're doing. And they don't take inventory of their values besides the five uh, criteria of an investment. Anyway, thanks for asking that question. All right, we got to roll, baby. We got to roll. It's Tuesday. Tomorrow is more good news Wednesday. That's what I've named it. No more hump day. Wednesdays are more good news. That's what we call Wednesdays. More good news Wednesdays. Today is Taco Tuesday. Monday is Ask Me Anything Monday. Friday's training is on coaching and mentoring, everything you need to know about coaching and mentoring and uh, teaching that on Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Get my free book, david at dmeltzer.com or 949-298-2905. Thank you, everyone. As always, remember, be kind to your future self and do good deeds. Thanks so much.